All right, welcome everybody. It's good to see you uh, tonight. Uh, we're going to get started uh, with our uh, live Bible study tonight. And as we get started tonight, uh, in uh, the Old Testament, grace abounds in the Old Testament. It is the uh, intro to the New Testament when Jesus uh, sheds his blood for us and uh, dies for us and, and is resurrected for our sins. And uh, the God's ultimate uh, act of grace to save our lives from sin. But grace is, is exampled many times in the Old Testament, and uh, there are seven of them that I've pulled out here that I just want to touch base on. It, it's uh, how God has used many people uh, through his grace. And uh, the first one as we start is God's grace uh, with Noah. And God's grace with Noah, the scripture in Genesis 6, 8 says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And we find that God was uh, regretting his creation and, and was upset with his creation to the point where he was ready to destroy all of creation. <clears throat> and because of wickedness, and uh, you know as well as I do, we live in a time which uh, wickedness as well abounds, and uh, God is not happy with wickedness, and I believe God has as well sent us a message uh, through all of these things that uh, I will stop everything you're doing except uh, the fact that I'm still God, and so please understand that God is speaking to people in this time, and he spoke to the people through Noah. In Noah's time, Noah preached many sermons and he preached often to tell them that God was going to destroy the earth, that they needed to repent. We're in the same situation, that God one day will uh, come and destroy this earth. And uh, you, uh, if, if we're saved, if, if you know Jesus as your personal Savior, uh, you will not experience that. God will have already come and gotten us and uh, raptured us from uh, this earth. So be reminded that God looked and he saw Noah. Uh, he saw Noah, a man of God, a man of grace, that God could share his grace with. And he saw grace in Noah and he saved Noah and his family. And he put them on the ark and he put the animals on the ark and he, pre he preserved creation in this way. You know it has to hurt God when his creation does not follow him and is wicked and lots of things that are going on in our world today depict the days of Noah and what is was happening. And many of us are, as Christians, are speaking out and saying, you know, God is gracious. God has shed his grace on this earth through his son, Jesus Christ, our personal Savior. The second thing, the second uh, uh, situation that I see in the Old Testament today is God's grace to Abraham and Sarah in their unbelief. Uh, remember what Sarah did when uh, she was told that she would have a child and she was a hundred years old. What did she do? She laughed. She thought it was funny. She thought it was a joke in a way. And suddenly uh, she found out that she would be uh, having Isaac and it says in Scripture in Genesis 12, uh, verse 3, it says, All in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And so in Abraham, uh, he would be the father of many nations. Uh, we sing a little song when we were kids. Uh, uh, we would sing the song, uh, Father Abraham had many sons. Uh, and we... Uh, sung that, that, that Abraham would be uh, blessed uh, as the stars in the sky, that he would be the father of many nations, and he would be blessed. And God shared his grace upon Abraham and Sarah through Isaac. And even as uh, Isaac was a young boy, old enough to talk, and he asked uh, Abraham, where are we going when he took uh, Isaac to be basically God said to sacrifice Isaac and he said son the Lord will provide <clears throat> and as they entered the situation uh, of sacrifice and as Abraham drew the knife 
<clears throat> to sacrifice his own son Isaac on the altar. God uh, stirred in the bushes and there was a ram uh, suddenly caught in the thicket. And they, God told Abraham to get the, lamb, the ram and sacrifice it instead of Isaac, his son. Abraham had so much faith in God. And so God had promised a son, and and uh, before you know it, you have the 12 tribes of Israel, and we have the lineage of David, which uh, became uh, the lineage of Jesus. And so we find Jesus being uh, prophesied throughout the Old Testament through uh, this line and this bloodline that Abraham had been promised. <clears throat> that even though he did not see it on earth, he became blessing to all mankind <clears throat> grace uh, the third thing i want to share the third person uh, specifically tonight is god's grace in the situation with joseph if you don't know the story of joseph uh, his brothers uh, faked his death they took his coat and coat and they uh, put blood on it from an animal and and they uh, took it back uh, to their father and it said Joseph had been killed by wild animals and it says uh, that Joseph was sold into slavery his brother sold him into slavery and as he went uh, into slavery he became very renowned uh, for his dreams and his pro his prophesying of what God was going to do next and as Joseph uh, shared uh, the wisdom that he had um, to store up all of the food and things uh, because there was a terrible drought coming and there would be famine in the lands all around them. Joseph became very renowned in this kingdom. And so the men, his brothers, came and was looking for food. And of course he asked, <clears throat> where's your father? So they went back and got his father and they brought him back. And the scripture in Genesis 50, verse 20, says, You intended to harm me, but God intended this for good. So they intended to harm him by selling him into slavery. But God used that, and in God's grace, he fed the nation of Israel through this, and he fed the family of Joseph. And so none of them starved. And there was many, many uh, bins and grain bins and storage bins full of food and available for Joseph and his family. Uh, the fourth one is Moses. <clears throat> Moses, God, he, he extended grace to Moses. And often Moses doubted the things God wanted him to do and uh, leading him to go back to Egypt and get the people from Pharaoh's hand. At every turn, God graciously guided Moses to do as he wanted him to do. He provided Aaron, his brother-in-law, to go with him and to speak for him. It says in verse in uh, Exodus 4, verse 13, but Moses told God, pardon your servant, Lord, because uh, please send someone else. It's kind of funny is sometimes when God asks us to do something, we, we sometimes want to back up and say, God, just send somebody else. Uh, it, it would be better if somebody else goes. And Moses gave the excuse that he did not speak. And when uh, Moses was instructed, I thought this was, I always thought this was kind of comical because when uh, Moses uh, was instructed to throw his staff down on the ground and it turned into a snake. And when it turned into a snake, he turned and ran away. Many of you probably can say I would be the same way. I personally am not afraid of the snake, but uh, some people wouldn't like it. And Moses didn't like it either. <clears throat> so he, he offered God, you know, the excuse or the reason. Maybe she, I can't speak. Maybe you should send someone else. <clears throat> the Israelites is the next one. As we know, the Israelites <clears throat> constantly rebelled against God. Often they had wicked kings. Often they had uh, situations where God told them to do something, <clears throat> and yet they did not do it. 
they did not obey, obey God. Uh, yet he gracious, graciously rescued them constantly from all of the things that <coughs> they caused themselves. <coughs> and he could bear uh, Israel's misery no longer, it says in Judges 10, 16. Uh, if we look at the Old Testament, we see many times when Israel walked away from God. We see a day now that many people have walked away from God. And I believe that this situation we're in today is a reminder that God is still in control. God is still here. His order is still happening. The earth is still growing. The grass is still becoming green. Uh, as I mentioned on Wednesday night, lots of things are happening with his creation right now. The beauty of all of it. God has set us in our homes so we could look out the windows and see his beauty and his creation carry on. And he is showing us that I'm still here. I'm still God. I'm still in control. And even though the Israelites continually uh, went away from God, God would always call them back. God would always tell them, hey, I'm still your God. I'm still God of Israel. And you know, Christians, he's still our God. I know that times may be tough and we're, we're so used to going and when we want to and the freedom of doing things. We're free as long as God allows us to be free. We're free as God as long as God wants us to be free. And so he is, I believe he is showing us, even as Christians, that there are things that are more important than all of the other going and doing that we do. I think about Rahab the harlot, often called in the, the land of Jericho. Uh, Rahab was someone that uh, hid the men that came uh, to see uh, the, the city of Jericho. There was 12 men and 10 of them came back and shared a negative response. And Joshua and Caleb says, we must go up and take it now. <clears throat> Rahab bravely asked God, to save her and basically ask the men, I will do this if you will save uh, me and my family. Lord, the Lord is your God. He, Lord, your God is God of heaven above and on, on the earth below. Joshua 2, 11. Rahab recognized God as the Savior, that the one who had the power to save was God and no one else. Even now, God is the only uh, creature, only person, only, on, the only God that can uh, save us from this pandemic, that can save us from this coronavirus. But God must institute his grace in order to change what is going on in the world. God is trying to get our attention. David is the last one tonight, the seventh one that I have uh, that God's grace was imparted to him. David lusted and stole, fornicated and lied and even killed. Yet God saw his heart and he still loved him. You know, David asked for forgiveness. He asked to be washed thoroughly from iniquity. It says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Psalm 51 verse 1. You know, we know that King David made mistakes. We read of his mistakes in God's word. And we know that he did wrong in the sight of the Lord. But God knew that there was a good man inside there that he could use to lead the nation of Israel, that he could use to show us the way to Jesus, to continue the lineage that Jesus would come from. The Bible is packed with examples of humans who sin, and a God who forgives. So don't ever forget that the Bible is filled with people who are just like us, that are humans, that were humans, and they sinned and they made mistakes. But God still offered them a, a time and place to be forgiven. Humans also who run, and a God who pursues them. The Bible is filled with humans who ran from God. Humans who gave excuses. Look at Moses. Humans who did not uh, want to serve God at first, but God showed them his grace and extended his grace to them and how God used them in mighty ways. 
one specific in the New Testament is Paul. I always think about Paul. Paul was a man that was not of God, but God changed his heart on the road to Damascus and how God used him to reach out to many Gentiles. You and I are Gentiles, and we would not have been saved without God's grace and using Paul to share the gospel to the Gentiles. Humans, the uh, Bible is filled with humans who do not deserve grace, and we are in that same situation today. We don't deserve grace. Grace is an unmerited favor. Grace is an un, un, unbought and not paid for. We cannot pay for grace by money or works or deeds. We must accept grace because God gives it. It is a gift. God's grace must be given, not sold, not bartered for, and not uh, worked for in any way. God's grace in the Old Testament, of course, is unavoidable. God's grace is unavoidable in our daily life. God's grace has given us such beauty to look at while we have to stay home. He's setting us down and saying, wait a minute, I am God. I am your God. And so Christian today, I want to speak to you. Christians today, we have a job to do. And our job to do, and I hope that we appreciate uh, the opportunity to do this. Our job is to tell people that Jesus Christ is, an, is God's grace given to us. His, his life was given that you and I would experience the grace of forgiveness. You know, often many of these people in the Old Testament I read where they were all sinners. They all made mistakes. And by God's grace, God brought them through and showed them the right way. And, I, and they became followers and did follow God. Today, we are to show God's grace in our lives and in our witness and who he is through the deeds and the, uh, and the acts of kindness, especially during this time. There's lots of act of, acts of kindness that are going on. And please be kind to one another and let's try to help one another and help those who, who need Jesus Christ. You know, God's grace is expressed in the way we share our witness. God's grace through Jesus Christ's blood and we celebrate this week uh, is, is our annual celebration of Easter. Easter is the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but especially the death, burial, and resurrection that he died on the cross and he died for our sins. And he, he bled once for all, the scripture says, once for all sin. And the next thing that we see is he was buried. He represented that he would, he would be buried and bury our sins with him and forgive them. Also, the resurrection is the power of God to save souls, to change lives, and to express his grace through us as we come to Christ and we accept Christ as personal Savior, we share God's grace and tell everyone we can that God's grace saved our soul through Jesus Christ. If you're on here today and you don't know Jesus, maybe you just fumbled up across our video and you don't know Jesus, three things I would share with you today is to admit, Lord, I'm a sinner. I've made mistakes. I'm just like these people. Brother Mitch talked about tonight in the Old Testament. I'm a sinner. I, 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 I need you. The second thing is to believe that this Easter weekend did really happen, that Jesus did die for our sins, and he did uh, uh, go to the grave, and he did conquer the grave by resurrection on Easter morning, that he gave his life for us, and that he shed his blood once, the Scripture says, for all sin. And the third thing is to confess, to come before him and bow your head and say, Lord, in, in prayer, and say, Lord, I confess. I'm a sinner. I need you. I need Jesus in my heart. Come and, be, uh, come and live with me in my heart. Come and be my Savior. And if you, if you prayed this prayer, if you maybe uh, need to talk to somebody uh, about it, uh, you can contact me through Facebook. My name's Mitchell Farthing. Uh, you can contact us through the church. You can send us a message through this uh, uh, Facebook page, and we would be glad to talk to you. If you need to talk to someone, 
uh, message us your number. We'd be glad to give you a call. One of us will contact you. But if you want Jesus today, that's how you accept him. That's how you accept the grace that God has given. The grace in the Old Testament is good, just simply good examples of how God's grace saved people that weren't perfect. None of us are perfect, of course. So as we close tonight in prayer, I know that many of you may have had requests, and if you do, you can share them on the comments of this page or of this specific video. We're thankful for you. If you need us, call us or message us or something. You can contact myself or your deacon. I hope it's good to see you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the beauty of the earth. We thank you for all you do for us. We thank you especially for your grace in Jesus. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. It's good to see all of you all. And I hope that once all of this is over, that we can have a whole bunch of people at church and celebrate. God bless you and good night.